Good morning. Welcome to Monticello United Methodist Church. We're glad to ha have you here to worship with us this morning. So as we begin this service, we uh, give you something to think about. Uh, have you ever wished that God would just tell you what to do? Have you ever struggled with, you know, what's my, what do you, what do you want, what's my purpose? What, uh, should I do this or should I do that? God, just, just tell me, tell me what you want me to do. Um, you, you're struggling with a big decision. You can't sleep at night. You, just, just meet me in the kitchen and, and tell me what you would, you don't have to be a burning bush. It doesn't have to be the wind or, um, so the question is, if God were to uh, speak clearly to you and tell you what he wanted you to do, what would you do? How would you respond? Would you join me in our call to worship? Come gather together like those who sat at Jesus' feet so many years ago. We gather with joy, for we too want to be disciples of Christ. I tell you, Christ is here with us, calling us now to life and love. Let's stand as you're able and join in singing our opening hymns.
to want to welcome you all here to Monticello United Methodist Church, to the classic service. I want to welcome those who are listening to this live broadcast on 1077 and to those who will watch the delay broadcast on Comcast Channel 90. At this time, I want to invite all the children to come up front for the message for all ages with Miss Libby, and I invite the rest of you to turn and greet one another. Do we have any other kids who want to come forward? Malia, no? Okay. All right. Well, this is a great group anyway. Good morning. Wait a minute. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that was much better. Hey, you know what? I was looking here, and Pastor Brian is going to be talking about walk the walk. See? Walk the walk? Does anybody know what that means? No. Let's see if we can find out. I, I happened to look that up, and it said um, in the one Bible that's kind of easier for me to read, it said, get out there and walk or run on the road. God um, uh, taught you to travel. And that means to follow Jesus and stay together. So walk the walk. Let's see what that means. I have something in here. Who is that? Snoopy, and what is Snoopy? A dog. A dog? Does everybody think he's a dog? Okay, let's put him up here and see if he's going to walk the walk. We said, we talked the talk, we said he's a dog, right? Yeah. All right, let's see if he does, acts like a dog. Whoa, is that what a dog does? <laughs> no, not really. Okay, Snoopy, you said you were a dog, but I don't think you are really a dog. Let's see what else I have. Oh, what's his name? And what is he? Oh, he does look like a very good. He could be an elf or a mouse. Let's see if he looks like either one, okay? Looks like a mouse. What do you think? Okay. All right, let's see. Here he goes. Wait a minute. Is that what a mouse does? No. No? Oh, he's getting close to Paige. Oh, no. <laughs> nope, I think you're right. He's not really a mouse. Well, you know what? I've got an idea. They didn't act like a They said they were a mouse, and they said they were a dog. But I don't think they acted like a mouse or a dog. Let's get together, and let's see. Can, let's see if we can come up with something. An animal that the big people see if they can guess who we are, okay? All right, we're going to act like an animal, and you see if you can tell what we are. Are you ready? <laughs> just going to do it. Okay, you ready? I know it's silly. Okay, ready, set. <laughs> what do you think we are? Are we monkeys? Yeah. yeah we, we look like monkeys. We don't look like monkeys, either, but we acted like monkeys. Are you really a monkey? No. Are you a monkey? No. Are you a monkey? No. Uh -uh. Monkey? Yes. Oh, you are. <laughs> He is a monkey. <laughs> no. No, okay. All right. Well, I do know that there is something that you guys, I am pretty sure all of you are, because I know all of you. <laughs> and mom, I hope mommy doesn't think you're a monkey. No, okay. All right. There's something that I know all of you are, and because I have seen you all try to follow Jesus. So would you put that on? You put it around your neck. Can you put it on? Whoa, whoa, whoa. They're tangled up. Oops. Did you get one? You want the blue one? Oh, dear. Okay. Here, take it. Thank you. 
joke. <laughs> Does anybody know what that says? Anybody? Oh, what is it mean? Christian. Christian. It says you are, thank you. It says you are a Christian. And I'm pretty sure that all of you are because to be a Christian, it means to follow Christ or walk the way that Jesus walked. And you're supposed to be like him in all ways. So, how many of you raise your hand again? Who thinks they're a Christian? You don't think so? I think I am. I think I, I've seen I've seen the, your family, and they they help you walk in the way of Jesus. I yes, and I know they walk in the way of Jesus. So that makes you a Christian. And guess what? You told me you were a Christian, and your name tag says you're a Christian. And there's one, and I say you're a Christian. I'm pretty sure, but what is the other thing we have to do to make sure we're a Christian? Anybody know what else? No, yours is right. Anybody know what we really have to do to be a Christian? Anybody? What? You walk, uh, you go walk and to see Jesus. You walk to see Jesus? That's perfect. I couldn't have said it better. Thank you. So we have to walk like we want to see Jesus and be like Jesus. And that makes you a Christian. Okay, so let's pray, and we're going to do my turn, your turn. Ready? Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, I'm not a dog, I'm not a dog, or a mouse or monkey, or a mouse or a monkey, but I am a Christian. I am a Christian. I want to walk. I want to walk. The walk just like you. The walk just like you. Amen. Thank you, and now you can go to Adventures in Faith. Would you join me in our affirmation of faith? We believe in God, the Creator Spirit, who moved upon the face of the deep at the beginning of creation, who created all that is, and who spoke through the prophets of old. We believe in Jesus Christ, into whom God's Spirit was poured in fullness and in power, that the whole creation might be restored unified, and who promised that the Spirit would come and fill the faithful with power to witness to the mighty love of God. We wait on that Spirit today with longing hearts, seeking to be empowered to witness to God's love in Christ, with fresh words and courageous actions of love and hope. Glory be to God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen.
As we come to our prayer time this morning, I want to uh, draw your attention to the connection card that's in your bulletin. Hope that you will take time to fill that out, and as the offering plates pass later on in the service, that you'll drop that in. You know, on the back of that um, connection card, there's a place for prayer requests, and if there is a prayer concern you have that you would like the uh, the, the pastoral staff or the community to uh, to pray for you about, would encourage you to write that down. If you mark it confidential, it'll only go to the pastoral staff. If you um, mark it to go in the prayer window, then uh, it will be in the bulletin next week. And um, unless you mark it confidential, all the requests will, will go out to the email prayer chain. So hope that um, if you have concerns that you'll write those down. Also hope that uh, you'll use the prayer window on the back of your bulletin as a, as a prayer guide for the coming week as you remember those in the life of our congregation and, and also our, our community together. As we uh, prepare our hearts for, for prayer this morning, would invite you to join with me as we, as we sing our, our call to prayer, Spirit of the Living God. <laughs> Lord, as we come before you in this day, we, we do invite your Holy Spirit to, to fall afresh upon us. Lord, renew our, our spirits. Give us guidance. Give us wisdom. Give us direction. Lord, empower us to, to live as, as your children and as you have called us to, to live. Lord, as we come before you in, in this day, the this last week has, has held some unexpected twists and turns for, for, for some folks sitting here. And Lord, as those who are, 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 are facing challenges, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would come near to them and give them your peace and, and uh, just may they know of your presence and, and your guiding hand. Lord, we also recognize that uh, the week ahead holds unknown challenges and, and opportunities. And so, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would, would fall afresh upon us, that when those, those opportunities and, and those challenges come our way, that we might respond in, in ways that reflect the, the character of Jesus. Lord, I pray that, uh, that you would help us to, to be your light, that we would be those who who, who reflect you and, and also demonstrate your, your love and your truth in, in our lives. Lord, as we come before you in, in this day, we, we pray for those who are struggling with, with grief, those who are struggling to, um, to find their way through a, a dark valley of grief. Just pray that they would find your, your grace to, to be sufficient. Lord, in, in this day, we, we pray for families who are, who are struggling, struggling to, um, to have enough provisions, struggling to, to have the, the, the emotional strength that they need to, to, uh, to hold things together day by day. Lord, for those who are feeling overwhelmed, I, I just pray that that you would, would shower your grace upon them and just give them the strength and the courage that they need day by day. Lord, we live in a world that is so divided, a world that, that seems to, to be so polarized. And yet, in the midst of, of that polarization, you've called us to live. You've called us to be your, your light. And so, Lord, I, I pray that you would help us to to be those that, that might bring unity 
in the, the face of divisions. Those who might speak a, a kind or, or gentle word in a, in a hostile or, or divisive situation. Lord, in the world in, in which we live, there are, are those who are, are living in the, the threat of violence, or the, the, threat of, the threat of war. Lord, we pray for, for Venezuela and their, their civil conflict and we just pray that there would come peace. We pray that there would come resolution. We pray that there might come greater harmony in, in, in that nation. Lord, we pray for, for the United Methodist Church as we deal with challenges as, as a denomination in the, the coming weeks. Lord, we pray for, for your wisdom. We pray that you would be at work in the, the hearts and lives of, of the delegates uh, going to, to General Conference. And Lord, for this church, I pray that we might be unified, that we might be unified even in the face of differences, that we might find our, our unity in, in Jesus and, and that we might continue to be those who, who reach out in love to, to our community, those who continue to, to shine your light and, and your truth for, for the sake of the gospel. Lord, hear our prayers. For we pray this all in Jesus' name, and we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, in the, the last few weeks, we've been studying out of the, the book of Ephesians, and in the, the book of Ephesians, one of the things that, that I've noticed is that uh, Paul has four prayers. There, there are four prayers that, that Paul has through, throughout the, uh, the book of Ephesians of, of how it is that he's praying uh, for, for the believers. Now, toward the end of the, the book, uh, Paul has some prayer requests of how they can pray for him. 
But, uh, but what I just continue to be drawn to, to these four prayers that, that Paul prayed for, for believers. And just kind of to summarize those, those four prayers, first of all, he prayed that the spirit of wisdom and revelation that, that might come so that they would know Jesus better. Second one was that, um, that God might open the eyes of their hearts so that they might know the hope that they have in Christ. Third, that they would be strengthened with the power through the Holy Spirit so that they might live out their faith. And fourth, that they might be rooted and established in love so that they might have power. You know, as I begin the, the message this morning, I, I want us to, to, to pray for that, that thir third prayer, inviting that the, the power of the Holy Spirit would, would, would come and dwell in us, would fall upon this place, in order that we might live out our faith. You know, in the, in the first three chapters of Ephesians, Paul is giving instructions to, to the church, to, to, to the followers of, of Christ. And, you know, as we've talked about, you know, that, that church is not just you know, one group of people, but it, the, the church is referring to, uh, to, to all believers. And in the, the last three chapters of, of Ephesians, he turns his, his uh, attention to how it is that we should live, you know, giving instructions of how individual Christians should, should live. Now, having an intellectual understanding of how it is that God wants us to live, you know, that can help us to, to bring about some change in our life. But yet, we really are powerless to, to make a change in our life without the, the help of the Holy Spirit. And so as, as we talk about to, today what it is or how it is that, that God wants us to, to live, I want us to, to pray that the, the Holy Spirit would, would give us the, the strength in order that we might make the, those changes or, or be aware of how it is that, that God may want us to, to live differently or, or respond to, to others differently. So let's, uh, let's pray together. Lord, I pray that the, the power of your Holy Spirit might rain down upon this place. Lord, I pray that uh, your Holy Spirit would come near to, to each person here. And as, as we hear your, your truth, as we hear how it is that, that you've called us to live, I pray then that, that your Holy Spirit would give us strength, that your Holy Spirit would, would empower us to put it into practice that we might more faithfully live as you desire and as you have called us to live. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from, from Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to read the first six verses from, from that chapter. Paul writes, As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There's one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when, when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is over all and through all and in all. This is the word of God for the people of God. God. You know, Paul begins this passage by recognizing that, um, that, that he's in prison. And he finds himself in, in prison because of, of um, his, his preaching of, of the gospel. Paul acknowledges his position in life at that moment. And then he says, I urge you to live a life that is worthy of the calling that you've received. And I like the, um, the way a, a contemporary translation called God's Word puts it. It says, I encourage you to, to live the kind of life which proves that God has called you. Well, what does that mean for us to, to live a life that's worthy of our calling? What does it mean to, to live a life that um, proves that, that, uh, that God has called us? What what does it mean to, to, to walk the walk when it comes to, to being a, a follower of Jesus? Not long ago, I was, was watching a, a teaching video, and, and the instructor in the video said, you have to trust Scripture more than our culture. 
And I wrote that quote down, and it's been on my desk for, for several weeks now, and it just, it's a constant reminder to me, you have to trust Scripture more than our culture. You know, and so often the, the voices that we hear from Scripture and culture are, are often at odds at one another. Now, Scripture and culture are not always mutually exclusive, but oftentimes we, we find the, they're at odds. And so as followers of Christ, do we have more confidence in the, the, the truth of Scripture, or do we have more, more confidence in the, the culture in which we live? You know, we, we embrace the, the do, do we embrace the teachings of Scripture over that of, of our culture? Paul tells us how to walk the walk. He tells us to, to live in a way that, that proves that God has called us, you know, to, that, that proves or, or shows that, that we are a follower of Christ. And, and there, are, there are five things, there are five Christian graces that Paul talks about in, in this chapter as we talk about walking the walk. And the first Christian grace that, that Paul mentions is that of humility. If you think you're humble, you're probably not. It's been said, humility is that grace that when you know you have it, then you've probably lost it. Humility means putting Christ first, others second, and, and yourself last. As we look at the life of Jesus as, as an example of humility, we, we remember you know, Jesus washing his, his disciples' feet. You know, even though Jesus was, was their Lord, even though Jesus was, was above them, you know, he was willing to, to become a, a servant. You know, Jesus, he took time with, with little children. Jesus took, took time with, with the sick. He took time with, uh, with, with lepers. You know, Jesus hung out with those who, who were, were identified as, as tax collectors and, and sinners. He didn't, he didn't do things to intentionally draw attention to himself. Now, even though Je what Jesus did often did draw attention to him, he would often, especially in the beginning of his ministry, he would tell people, now, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone what you've just experienced, what, what's just happened. When, when the disciples got into an argument about which of them was the greatest, you know, Jesus brought a child over beside him and said, it's not about which one of you are the greatest, but it's an issue of which one of you can, can become like, like a little child, you know, trusting and, and innocent. Uh, Jesus said that um, those who, who would be first would, would be last, and, and the last would be first. He told them that whoever was the least among them would be the one recognized as, as the greatest. Our culture tells us that you, know, you need to blow your own horn, you, you need to, to promote yourself. But Paul instruct us, instructs us that what Jesus tells us is that we should be completely humble. Secondly, Paul tells us that we should be completely gentle. Another word for gentleness is, is meekness. Now, meekness doesn't mean weakness. Gentleness has been described as power under control. Jesus was gentle, and yet he went in and, and cleared the, the money changers from, from the temple. You know, our culture tells us to be assertive, get what you want no matter what the cost, but Scripture tells us to, to be gentle. Some have described gentleness as, as being tactful. Um, and, and tact is thinking twice before saying nothing. Tact is the ability to think of things far enough in ad advance that you don't say them. Tact is the ability to stand on your own two feet without stepping on someone else's toes. People with tact also have less to retract. Every time a person rides a, a commercial airline, you know, they're given instructions by the, by the, the steward or stewardess and tells you that, uh, 
you know, if the, the oxygen mask should, should fall down, that you should put yours on first before helping a child or, or someone sitting, sitting next to you. And there, there's good reason for that. Because if, um, if the oxygen mask fell down, if, if you needed it, and you tried to help someone else before you put your own on, then it would be an issue that you might pass out, and, and neither of you would have the, the oxygen you needed. So you first needed to to uh, have the oxygen yourself before you w- would help someone else. Well, the same is true with our emotions as, as parents, as we respond to our children. If we can't control our emotions, if we can't control our, our anger, then how do we expect our children to be self-controlled? Proverbs 15.1 says, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but harsh words stir up anger. Walking the walk means that we answer gently, not with anger, not with great emotion, not with sarcasm, but with gentleness. When we are faced with a situation and we feel our our blood pressure beginning to to rise in us, maybe that should should be an indicator that we need to to take a step back. You know, an indication that, uh, that probably what's about to come out of our mouth is not going to be something that's gentle. And so we need to, to be silent until we can, can respond in a way that, that is more gentle. The third Christian grace that Paul mentions is that of patience. Patience is sometimes called long-suffering. You know, and, and sometimes being patient seems like we're, we, we may be suffering. But long-suffering actually means Long-tempered, the ability to, to endure discomfort without fighting back. It seems, like, um, it seems like patience is often a topic that comes up around Christian character. You know, when we talk about the fruit of the Spirit, you know, love, joy, peace, patience. You know, when um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, when when the Apostle Paul describes what, what unconditional love is, he begins by saying, love is patient. And now in this passage, as, as Paul is, is talking about Christian graces, he says that one of those is that we are patient. You know, now, it, it's good to be patient with circumstances, but the patience that is being talked about with the, the fruit of the Spirit and, and living out love. And, and in this, this passage, talking about Christian graces, the, the, the patience that's being talked about is not with circumstances, but it's, it's patience in relationship. It's patience in, in relationship to other people. <clears throat> when we become impatient, we often do so because we're not getting our way. You know, when was the last time that you became impatient? Who was the last person that you became impatient with? I see that look, Becky. <laughs> she looked over at Mark. Um, <laughs> you know, who was that person that you were impatient with, and, and, and why was it? Were they not doing what you wanted? Was, was it an issue that, that you weren't getting what, what you wanted? Why why were you impatient in, in, in that particular situation? When we, when we become impatient, you know, we're not showing the, the Christian character, the Christian graces that, that Paul is talking about. The fourth Christian grace that Paul lists is that of, of bearing with one another in love. Uh, we're in the month of February. February is the, is the month of love. It's it's the month of Valentine's Day, and, and we often romanticize love. We, we often think that, that love should, should be easy. But Paul says that, um, that we should bear with one another in love. And, and bearing carries with it the idea of hanging in there. Bearing with, with one another is the, uh, the idea of, of, of persevering. Bearing with one another in love may be connected with the, the previous Christian grace of being patient, bearing with one another in love, you know, carries with it the idea of putting others before ourselves. In our culture, we're we're constantly bombarded with messages 
of getting what I want, getting what I deserve, demanding my rights. But the message of our culture, you know, as it consistently preaches to us, me, 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 the message of Scripture is that of serving others. The, the message of Scripture is, is putting others before self. Jesus washing the disciples' feet, he, he told them that they should follow his example and that they should wash one another's feet, that they should, should serve one another. There's, there's something here this morning that, uh, there's someone here this morning that, that needs to hear this part of, of the message. Bearing with one another in love. Now, there's someone here this morning that you're just wanting to give up on a relationship. Maybe it's a marriage, maybe it's a friendship, maybe it's one of your kids. You're, you just had it. You, you want to be over and, and done. And, and the message that you need to hear is that Christian grace call, calls you to bear with one another in love. Continue to persevere, continue to invest in that relationship. Now let me put a disclaimer because there may be someone who is involved in a, in a relationship that is physically or emotionally abusive. If you're in a, a relationship that's physically or emotionally ab abusive, I'm not saying to you to continue to, to hang in there. You need to, to protect yourself. You need to, to do something to, to keep safe. But I believe that there's, there's someone here this morning that, that needs to hear that word of bearing with one another in love. That relationship that, that you just want to wash your hands of, you need to continue to persevere. You need to continue to, to invest in. The, the fifth Christian grace that Paul talks about is to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Now, unity doesn't mean uniformity. Unity doesn't mean that we all look the same. Unity doesn't mean that that we all act the same. Now, there are Christian principles, you know, like the ones we're talking to today about these, these five Christian graces that as followers of Christ should be present in, in all of our lives, but how we live them out is not the, the same. You know, unity you know, does not mean uniformity. You know, Paul talks about unity in, in the church but he, as he talks about the unity in the church in, in some other places, he, he talks about the, the body of Christ. He said, everyone's not a hand, everyone's not a foot, everyone's not an eye, everyone's not, not an ear. But there are many pieces and all the pieces fit together in, in unity. So we're not all the same, but we all have a, a commonality you know, as, we, as we come to, together. As the United Methodists, one of the challenges that we face as a denomination is whether we can have unity in the midst of diversity. No matter how the denomination deals with, with tensions that, um, that, that we face as a, as a denomination, you know, one of the things is for us as a local church, you know, how do we maintain unity in the midst of, of differences as of opinion? Just like love takes work, so maintaining the unity of the Spirit takes ongoing investment and ongoing work. Paul urges us that, that there are, are seven things that uh, should foster unity. First of all, there, there's one body of Christ. We, we've been talking about this the, the last last several weeks. You know, it's not an issue that there are many bodies, but there is one body. There's one church made up of, of all believers. There, there's one Spirit, there's one Holy Spirit, there, there's one Lord, Jesus Christ, there, there's one hope, there's one faith, there's one baptism, and there's one God and Father of us all. And our culture tries to bring divisions and, and demonize someone when they're not just like me, then we need to, to remember that those are not things that, that bring us together. Demonizing and, and divisions don't bring us together, but, but rather living out this, this, these Christian graces help to, to bring unity. Paul calls us to develop and live these Christian graces. But where are you going to take your cues? Are you going to trust the message of Scripture? 
or are you going to trust the message of our culture? Let us pray. Lord, we, we confess that we face many challenges in, in our daily lives. Lord, help us to, um, to know your word. Help us to, to take cues from, from your word. Help us to embrace your word in, in all things. Lord, we pray that the, the power of your Holy Spirit might rain down upon us in order that we might better reflect Jesus in this coming week. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. This morning we're going to, to share in the, the sacrament of Holy Communion together. And in the United Methodist Church, we practice open communion, which means that anyone who wishes to respond to the invitation to the Lord's table is, is invited to come. That invitation is to all who do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and, and seek to live in love and charity with your neighbor. If, if that's the desire of your heart, then you're, you're invited to the Lord's table today. We're going to be receiving communion in the pews, and so in a few moments the ushers will come forward and get the elements, and they will pass them to you in your pews, and you may partake as, uh, as the elements are, are passed. Just a reminder that the, the bread that's being passed in the pews is, is gluten-free, so if, if that's a concern that, that you need gluten-free bread, be aware that this is gluten-free, and, and even if you don't need gluten-free bread, it's fine for you to eat gluten-free as well. Um, as we prepare our hearts for, uh, to receive communion, let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, forgive us for those times and those ways when we become too full of ourselves. Father, forgive us for those times and in those ways in, in which we don't respond to, to others with gentleness and, and kindness. Father, forgive us for our impatience when we just want to have our own way. Lord, may you work in our hearts and may you empower us to, to live in, in ways that are are more reflective of Jesus day by day. For it's through Christ that we ask your forgiveness. Amen. On the night that Jesus gathered with his disciples in, in the upper room, he took bread, and after giving thanks, he, he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. And also after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to them. And he said, drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. He said, as often as you break this bread and drink from this cup, he said, do it in remembrance of me. And now, O oh Lord, we, we pray that you would send down your blessing upon these symbols of bread and grape juice, may they become for us the body and blood of Jesus. And in turn, may, may we be his witnesses in the world in which we live. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. I would invite the ushers to come forward.
Rick asked you a question at the, the beginning of the service of what if God gave you a message in the sky? Well, maybe he hasn't given you a message in the sky, but, but in his word, he makes it clear how it is he, he calls us to live and, and how it is that, that he wants us to live as his followers. Our memory verse this week comes from, from uh, Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verse 1b. It says, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you have received. As you memorize that, as you re- read it, as, as you remember that verse over the course of this week, may it be a daily reminder of our call to, to walk the walk. Well, how are you going to, to walk the walk this week? Now, as I've talked about the, those Christian graces this morning, was there, was there one of them maybe that the Holy Spirit was kind of prompting you and nudging you that, okay, this is one that, that you need to, to work on? Now, there's nothing wrong with you working on it on your own, but in order to really make a change, we need the, the help of the Holy Spirit. So whatever that may be that, that you sense God nudging in you to um, changes that maybe need to, to be made, you know, work on it on your own, but confess that need to, to Him. Ask Him to help you. Ask the, the Holy Spirit to help you on a, on a daily basis that, that your heart, that, that your actions might, might be transformed. You know, there's also spiritual warfare that, that's going on in, in the world in, in which we live. <laughs> Satan is working through the, the culture and, and seeking to, to bring divisions. And, it, and God, through the power of his Holy Spirit, wants to, to bring unity. And so another next step for you the, this week may be a, a commitment to, to being a unifier rather than a divider. Well, as, as we come to our offering this morning, I... Uh, I just want to draw attention to a special offering we're going to be taking next, next week. You know, as we talked last Sunday, as a congregation uh, being a, a launching church, there have been several who um, have gone into ministry from, from this church. And, and right now we have three seminary students who are a part of our congregation. And so uh, whenever we've had a seminary student in, in school, when, when I've been here, we've always taken an offering to, to try and help them and encourage them just in the, the financial cost of seminary. You know, seminary costs are about $18,000 a year. So, I mean, it's a, a pretty significant uh, you know, chunk of change as you're going to seminary and, and making a commitment to that for, for at least three years. So um, next Sunday, we're going to be taking a special offering for, for seminary students, and then the, the, um, the staff parish will, will give direction to that offering as we've got three seminary students, uh, you know, Pastor Justin, Pastor Kelly, and then also our, our son, Benjamin. So just want to make you aware of that offering that, that's coming next week. Let's pray for this morning's offering. Lord, as we give of our tithes and offerings, we, we pray for your blessing upon what we give. As we offer our, our next steps to you, as we offer our, our prayer concerns before you, we pray that you would receive what we offer, that you would bless what we give, And may it be used to to make a difference for your kingdom here on earth. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. So I would invite the ushers to come forward as we receive our morning offering. And Pastor Justin has a few more announcements. Good morning. All evening activities tonight are happening as usual except for 648. Uh, Tonight is our superb owl party. I'm not going to be confused with any other parties going on in the area. So that's going to start at 6 o'clock tonight. We'll have tons of hour-related activities. It's going to be a great time. We're going to have the TV on just in case anything happens to be on tonight. Thank you all so much for uh, praying for our one-night event. It was super awesome. We had 45 students come out, 12, actually, sorry, 15 first-time guests um, came for, to hear the gospel, and they heard the gospel, and it was amazing. Uh, so thank you all for your prayer, and if you want to continue to pray, we'd appreciate that as well. A connect group start this week. If you got a newsletter, married people, it's not starting at 6 o'clock. It starts at 6.30 on Wednesday. So if you're part of that small group, it's at 6.30 on Wednesday in the sanctuary, not in Connection Court. There's a little typo there. And if you haven't gotten to a connect group yet, you can sign up for those with Pastor Kelly. It is not too late. It's never too late. We can get you in there. We'll be selling new Mumsy swag for our next capital uh, campaign fundraiser. Um, T-shirts, hoodies, jackets, whatever you want. We can get you a headband probably if you need to. Um, you can talk to Mary Ann Novak. She's back in the back with the table. And also you'll be getting a uh, mailer. And there's sheets outside that have all the colors, all different things. It's also on the screens. 
Um, I'm getting a long sleeve green shirt if you want some, some fashion advice from me. Um, probably not your best idea. Please check the bulletin for other announcements. We have a lot of stuff going on, and uh, please stand for our closing hymn. But now as you go from, forth from this place, may you walk the talk, may you walk the walk, and may you share the love of Jesus with, with others. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen.